What's going on, everybody? Hey, it's Mike, your host for the Professional Independent Podcast. If you're tuning in on YouTube and Spotify, make sure you subscribe. That way you don't miss any of the other episodes we have coming out. Thank you for coming back and visiting us. This week's episode is not what I had intended to originally talk about, but here we go. We're going to get into it. We're going to talk about spouse reintegration coming back from deployments. Hang on just a second. We'll get right back to you. That This week's episode is not what I originally had planned to talk about. But I've seen a lot of stuff happening on social media. A lot of questions have come up with some of the other men that I know that are spouses about how do we as men reintegrate with our spouses. Tons of information out there for female spouses. But as I always say, this information applies to anybody. And before we get too far into this, I think I finally figured out the GoPro situation. So if this shuts off again... I may just have to figure out something else. Maybe just start recording straight to the laptop. I don't know, but I really think I've got it figured out this time. So if you, if you look around on social media, social media, as I've said in previous podcasts, can be our greatest ally, but it can also be one of our biggest obstacles because there's so much information out there. There is a lot of bad information out there. Um, everybody likes to joke about, you know, doing the reintegrate, you know, meeting your spouse coming off the plane or at the airport with the signs that are like, you know, report for booty and all this stuff. It's, it's, you especially see it a lot with the younger spouses. And this information is just as applicable to the younger spouses as it is to the spouses that your service member has been in for 10 plus years. It could be coming up for retirement. I don't know. Um, so what I want to talk about is time. Time, time, time. That is your biggest thing you need to give yourself and your spouse. Whenever your spouse comes back from deployment, you need to give you and them time. Yes, everybody wants to do the big romantic welcoming and all this stuff. You've been separated for 6, 12, 18 months. Time. Think about it like this. You have been in charge of the house. Let's, let's say you don't have kids, okay? You've been in charge of the house, operating solo. Maybe you went home to family. Uh, maybe you moved back in with your parents because you didn't want to just be alone. Or maybe you're a working spouse and you have you know dogs and bills and cats and a social life. Either Whichever one of those buckets you fit into, or if you don't fit in one of those buckets, maybe you... Again, I'm trying to talk about you know people without kids right now. Um, I never experienced this without children. My wife didn't deploy until our kids were, I think my oldest was four. Yeah, my oldest was four. Youngest was, no, my youngest was going to turn four. Youngest was two and a half, three, somewhere in there. However, with that said, if, if, you've, if you're going through it solo, you're now adjusted to not having to check with a spouse or not wanting to check with a spouse, but if you want to go out to eat or if you want to let the dishes pile up or if, you know, let's say you've been watching a, a TV show by yourself or any of these things that seem inconsequential, right? They're little minute things, but you didn't have that partner with you there to talk about stuff. Whenever that your service member comes home, if you try to automatically force feed yourself back into their life or force feed them back into your life, think about it. Like I just said, you've been operating everything solo. There's a lot of stuff you haven't been considering. You haven't been considering what is that going to look like when they come back. And I'm not trying to say this like it's a bad thing. What I'm trying to get you to realize is they need time to reintegrate and so do you. You know, maybe you've changed what time you eat dinner. You've been staying up a little later. Maybe you're eating dinner at like 8 o'clock. While they've been deployed, maybe they've been eating dinner at like 5. So they come home, they're in their head, they're, they're so used to everything being regimented because they don't have the freedom to just eat whenever they want to. They've got certain dinner times. You know, chow's at a certain time. they got to get the chow, otherwise the, you know, defects going to close. Whereas your kitchen doesn't ever close, right? Mine does, but I have kids. So my, my kitchen definitely closes. Um, that's a joke. Parents get it. Sorry. Um, so 
even those little things like that, you know, so now that if, if you're like, well, I'm not hungry at five and your service member's like, I need to eat, give them time. Be like, be flexible. Be like, okay, cool. We can go out, you know, we can have dinner early and then maybe you just eat a snack later. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but to your service member, it is. Um, I was just talking, I was just saw a post from, from another guy and he had planned this big welcoming for his spouse that had just come home and it didn't go the way he was expecting it to. And this is, and if, and but you, you didn't put your name on the, the Facebook chat. So trust me, this is not a shot at you. This is just something to think about. I know whenever my spouse came home, she wanted so desperately to just jump right back into being a mom and being a wife. But I knew that she was going to need time. I'm not trying to say I'm super spouse for the, if, he, if any of you know me, you know, I am not a super spouse. I struggle on the daily to do the best that I can. So this is just stuff that I've learned, but it made sense to me that coming back from, let's just a different time zone. You know, she came back from the desert, almost 12 hours. I guess back then it was eight because we were, in a, we were in a different time zone. So it was like an eight hour time difference, but coming from the desert to interior Alaska, it was literally a hundred degree temperature difference from where she left to where she got. And I knew it was going to take time. I didn't expect her to want to come home and, you know, rekindle six months worth of romance that we missed out on. You know, I, even though things have been happening, um, you know, this one guy has said that, you know, he, you know, they've been in the gym a lot and had really changed himself and it was a shock to his spouse. I get that a hundred percent. This last deployment when my wife was gone, I lost, uh, 30 pounds and that, you know, 30 pounds for me was a lot because I lost the weight differently than I did the last time. I had a really big weight loss. So, you know, I lost 30 pounds, but I didn't really lose a lot of size. I just lost, I lost a lot of fat. I, I was working with a nutrition coach. So I lost a lot of fat, but even my wife didn't immediately notice that. And that was a pretty, you know, I could have taken that to heart or I've realized she's been gone for six months coming back here after only having to worry about herself. The only thing my wife worried about the whole time she was gone was work and going to class. My, my wife was really busy. As I said before, I'm, you know, my, my wife is, my wife's an officer in the medical field. Whenever she was deployed, she was basically the squadron deputy commander for where she was. So whenever her commander left, she was the commander. So my wife was very busy as all of our spouses are when they're deployed. I'm not saying that somebody's, you know, my spouse is busier than other spouses. Everybody's spouse, when they're deployed, they are busy. They are working six to seven days a week, 12 to 16 hours a day. Yes, I don't, I don't know if every spouse gets one, the one day off a week. I know mine got about a day and a half off every week. But even then on those the times that she was off, if she was the commander, she didn't really have it off. So I knew she needed to come home and decompress. A good rule of thumb, and this is going to make some of y'all not very happy, but a good rule of thumb, one week for every month. That's, that's the bare minimum you need to give them to come back and reintegrate. One week of decompression time for every month they were gone. So my spouse was gone for six months. At a bare minimum, she needs six weeks. And I talked about this on my other pod, on one of the other episodes. I, I, I think it was the Kids and Emotions podcast about not letting her, and this is going to sound very patriarchal or whatever the cool term is these days. This is going to sound very, I'm the man, I make decisions, but it's not. This is just, this just makes sense. If you've been running your house for six months or 12 months or 18 months, it is not the best idea for your spouse to come in and automatically get in the decision-making process for what's been going on in your house. Because your spouse, if you can hear that, that's my dog. He's rolling around. Your spouse doesn't know everything that's been going on at home. I don't care how much you have told them or how... Uh, how up 
you, they think they are, you know, they may think, oh, I've seen your social media post or, you know, we we talk all the time. I guarantee you have not told them everything. There's information that seems common to you that they're like, whoa, I did not know that. That is going to stop them from making the best decision that they can make about anything that's going on in your house. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's what time you get up in the morning, what time you go to, what time you work out, the types of food you've been eating, uh, the shows you've been watching. Uh, maybe you quit drinking. If you, if let's say you'd like to drink every now and then, let's say you quit drinking while your spouse is gone. Maybe you didn't think to tell them because while you were deciding to quit drinking, you just decided just to push it out of your head. So you just didn't tell them. And now they come back and like, Hey, let's go out to the bar. And you're like, I don't really do that anymore. Or it's like, Hey, let's have a drink. And you're like, I don't really do that anymore. They're like, wait, what? So all these little things that have been changing may not seem significant to you. Maybe you're like, well, what's the big deal? But they haven't been thinking about that. That is six months that they have not been thinking about what's going on at home because while they're deployed, all they're thinking about is deployed life. And it's really not fair to them for you to expect them to be trying to keep up with what's going on at home. And I, again, I'm not saying that like, oh, well, they're, you know, they need to know what's going on. Big stuff, yes. But also, what can they really do about it? Besides being ear to vent to, if, if you're fortunate enough to have long enough phone call to have that conversation with them. I'm pretty fortunate. My wife, you know, we, wherever my wife goes, she's Air Force. She has Wi-Fi. It's one of the things that people like to dig on Air Force for because we have Wi-Fi everywhere we go pretty much. So we were able to have those conversations, usually on the days that she was off because of the time difference. But we were able to have those some of those bigger conversations when something big was happening. Because our kids had a really tough time with this last deployment. I had a tough time with this last deployment, as I mentioned on, you know, one of the previous episodes. But expecting them to just jump in day one, week one, a month in. Maybe at a month in, depending on how quickly your spouse is be able to shed that deployment weight. Meaning, get out of the mindset of okay, I'm not I'm not deployed anymore. I can I can let go of some of that, you know, forced situational awareness. Some of that forced thinking of okay, well, it's this time I have to do this. It's this time I have to do that. Uh, depending on your spouse's job, they they are going to need time to figure out they're not in a danger zone anymore. You know, if your spouse is in one of those career fields where they are out in danger zones all the time. Dude, they really need time. They really need time. And they more than just time, they're going to need understanding to decompress and get out of that mindset of, you know, this is the stuff that's been happening. And I'll, and I'll also share this with you. If they had a tough deployment, if some pretty heavy stuff happened while they were downrange, they're really going to need understanding. And they're not, they're not, they may not want to talk to you about it. All you can do is be there and be supportive and be encouraging that they are able to reach out to the people that they need to reach out to, be that chaplain, MFLAC, Military One Source, mental health. There are a lot of resources out there if you're willing to reach out to them. But if somebody had a really heavy deployment or if they came home, let's say they didn't have a super heavy deployment, but they came home and they're just having a really hard time reintegrating, then you need to be supportive and don't shove them to it, but just be like, hey, maybe this would be a good idea. Have you thought about talking to these people? Do you want me to go with you? Those are the conversations that need to happen if your spouse is having a tough time, you know, a month to six weeks in from coming back. And maybe there's something going on that they don't want to share with you. That's... That's really what it, what it comes down to is time. I know I said it five, six times at the beginning of this episode, but time is your spouse's biggest need when they come back. It's not their favorite meal. It's not seeing you in a special outfit. It is, matter of fact, I think the last time I picked my wife up from the airport, I think I was in sweats. 
it, it is what it is because I knew whenever she came home, the last thing she's cared, the last thing she cared about was seeing me dressed up. And I know a lot of, a lot of people and I've had, you know, conversations with, uh, with female spouses where they said, you know, they wore, they were going to wear something, you know, skimpy or, you know, something, you know, flattering form, you know, whatever to pick their, meet their spouse at the airport. That's the last thing your spouse, your spouse has been on a rotator for, you know, 12, 16 hours plus probably, they probably had to get to the airport the day before. So they probably aren't smelling super great. They, they're not, they don't care what you're wearing. They just want to go home. They want to go home. They want to get a shower. They want to eat a cheeseburger and they want to take a, they want to take a nap. That's what they want. Again, not speaking for everybody, but the vast majority of them, that's what they want. They, they want to come home. They want to take a nap. They want to take a shower and they want a cheeseburger. It's just the way it is. Again, time. They need to reintegrate. And the last thing that you need to do is force your reintegration schedule on them. And what do I mean by that? What I, what I mean is you don't need, if you expect them to just jump back in like it was right before they left. And if you think about it, I guarantee about two to four weeks before they left, they had a mindset shift you may not have, you may not have even seen. Because you were so worried about them leaving that you may have not even saw the mindset shift they had getting ready to deploy. They may have started being a little quieter, you know, seeming like they were spaced out a little bit more often, uh, packing gear, repacking gear, all of that stuff. And while you were worried about them getting out the door, you didn't see that shift. And so when they come back in your head, you're like, oh no, everything was fine before they left, but they were already shifting out, out of being home and being de to being deployed it's going to take them, again, a minimum of a week for every month they were gone. That's and that's best case scenario for in my in my experience, my personal opinion, best case scenario. So time. So just give do yourself that favor, and give them time to get back and get reintegrated. Now I'm going to shift gears a little bit. I'm going to talk about if the reintegration with kids. Because this is where the bulk of my experience is. Because all three of my wife's deployments, we've had kids. And all three of them, all three of the deployments so far, they've all been different ages. The first deployment, my kids were super young. They didn't understand why mom was missing birthdays and Christmas. They just knew she wasn't there and they did not like it. And then whenever they whenever mom came home, you know, they were super they they made they made signs, which we still have. My wife tried to get we're getting ready to PCS. My wife tried to get rid of the signs. And I was like, no, you're not getting rid of those signs. The girls, the girls loved making them, and we still smile when we see them because we remember mom coming home from that first deployment and her seeing those signs and how happy that made everybody. And you know, this last deployment. You know, my oldest daughter had a really tough time because it was the third time mom had missed her birthday. Second year in a row that she had missed her birthday, as a matter of fact. And that was tough. That's tough. My, my oldest daughter's 10 now. That is that is a really tough thing for a little kid to go through. You know, she knows that mom doesn't have anything, that can't do anything about it. She understands more now. Doesn't mean she has to like it. So when mom came home this last time, it was really vital. And yes, I'm going to use the word, it was vital to me to try and to try my best and contain the level of expectation from my kids and direct the level of expectation from my wife back into the house. And that is, I mean, I really, I felt like a program manager at that point because my daughters, you would have thought they were trying to fit six months of missed mom into that first weekend home. I mean, my wife did not have a moment to breathe. Like from the time my kids' eyes opened until the time they went to sleep, they were all about catching up with mom, which is fine. But at the same time, 
I really did my best to try to mitigate that and be like, you know, okay, mom needs time here. Mom needs time here. Girls, let's go do this and give mom a chance to just breathe for a minute. So I would take them out. I would make them go with me to go to the store or something. Or if we all went together, I would be like, okay, well, one of you come with me and the other one can go with mom and do this. Because again, time. If we just try to, if you try to force feed it back into them, meaning if you just try to, to jam all the reconnection time into those first time, you're going to overwhelm. It, it would overwhelm anybody, and now you're going to over. Now you're going to shove that onto a service member that's come back from deployment. Again, think about it. If they come back from a heavy deployment, and they're really trying to work through some stuff, that's a lot. Because now they're trying to think, well, why can't I just enjoy being with my family? Because they're still working through that deployment stage. They're trying to get the mindset back to being home and work through whatever happened while they were downrange. It's really, and, don't, and this is also one of those times where you can't take anything from them personally. They may say stuff um, and they may say it in a way that you find offensive or you take personally and maybe they're still just in that, mil that not military mindset. They're always in a military mindset, but they're still in that deployment mode where they're not necessarily thinking about the way they say things or they're not even necessarily thinking about the way they say stuff because they're still used to talking to people that are downrange that not family. I mean, some of them become like family, but what I, you know what you, you see where I'm going with this. They may say something to you off color or I, or you're or they make they make a joke that in their head is a joke from when they were downrange, but you don't you don't know the context of it, and so you're like what, and you might get you know your feelings hurt or thinking well why do they have all these inside jokes with other people but I don't understand these inside jokes type deal. It's so a time. Give your give your spouse time. If you have kids, which is what we're talking about now. Sorry, I, I decided to do this literally like 15 minutes ago. And so I have no notes to go by. So this is completely off the cuff. But if you have kids, make sure that you do the best you can not to take time away from them, but to try to mitigate how much time they force onto your, your spouse when they come home. And guess what that's going to do also? That's going to take time away from you. So again, remember, time is your biggest ally. Once they're home, don't feel like, oh, well, I need to get more time also. Give them a couple of weeks to start getting, you know, back, especially, you know, if you have, if you have kids, let them get reconnected with the kids slowly, you know, figure out, okay, you know, if they've been home for a little bit, Hey, you know, I was thinking we can get a babysitter next, you know, next Thursday while they're, especially while they're still in R&R, &R. you know, going to grab a babysitter. Let's go out to dinner. Don't, you know, if they if you want to get dressed up, fine, but ask, hey, yo, can we go out to a fancy dinner? Especially if you really want to like go out and like spoil yourselves. Like, hey, can we go out to a to a really nice dinner? Maybe dress up a little bit. Communication is so important. You the one of the biggest things I see that spouses miss the mark on is communication versus expectation. They expect their spouse to just know stuff. They expect their spouse to understand why they want to do certain things, but they don't communicate why it's important or why they want to do it. Communicate. I, mean, I say this almost every week. Communication is so vital. It is probably the most important piece of relationship advice I can give you. Learn to communicate with your spouse. Learn to communicate with yourself. Make sure that you are communicating everything uh, i've said before and i will say it today because i did I've, i haven't journaled in a couple weeks but get a journal journal every day i didn't journal for two weeks and what i found was i was letting things get away from me things that i was before i was making time for time started dictating what i was going to do instead of me dictating what i was going to do with my time meaning i kept saying oh, i can get to that later well, later never comes because time rushes in and says, well, now you need to do this, now you need to do this. So the thing that you wanted to do 
that was good that's good for you that fills your cup is gone because you don't have time to do it because now you've allowed that time to go away and be filled in with other stuff you know because today i decided i want to get back to my schedule and journaled slightly off topic but stay with me because i decided i was going to get back to what i need to do which is journal and take care of things make time to be creative and make time for my podcast and share information i was i'm able to get all this stuff done before lunch and i've already done a few other things around the house like get get ready for get ready to pcs or get ready for the garage sale but that's what i'm getting at if you learn how to communicate with yourself it makes you a better spouse because now as you journal as you learn how to communicate you get better at it and there's less chance for miscommunication between you and your spouse there's also less expectation because you know you didn't communicate what you were wanting i'm telling you that's one of the biggest things that i've learned is i stopped expecting my spouse to just know stuff and it, it, i don't do it all the time i'm still not great at it i tell you all this all the time I'm, some of the stuff i figure out as i go we were just having this big conversation uh yesterday maybe day before no day before it was day before yesterday and i told my spouse i said look i said maybe i'm missing this and please tell me if i am but this is the way i feel and if you'll see what i did there is i didn't tell her well this is the way i see it or well this is what you're doing i said i let her know this is the way i see it this is you know this is the way i feel about the subject please tell me if i'm misinterpreting your stance on it and then i would tell her what i what i thought i saw and we were able to talk through that and came to find out it's because the reason we were at odds on it was because we i didn't communicate everything there was something that i said in the conversation that the way i said it was not perceived the way i meant it imagine that right you don't communicate something and then you tr you start getting upset well why do you why don't you understand because the way i said it was way open ended and in my head it wasn't so communication communicate with your spouse when they get back from deployment about hey and you can start this before they come back you can t start talking to your spouse before, you, before they get back and be like look when you get home for the first two weeks, you know, just take your time and breathe. Meaning, just take your time, come home, decompress. You know, if y'all can take a vacation, if you don't have kids, if y'all can take a vacation, go camping, do whatever. We love to go camping, so, so go camping is going to be my first one. Go camping. Um, spend three or four days out in the woods away from cell phones, away from email, away from social media. That's a big one. Away from social media. Put your phone down. Turn it off. Whatever. If they're on R and R, then there's nothing that that their command needs to get in touch with them for. If they're on R and R, go. Tell them where you're going and just go. One thing that we did was after my spouse came back was we spent a week in Disney. Why did we spend a week in Disney? Because it was on the back end of her R and R. She had been, you know, she had missed Christmas. She had missed birthdays again. The kids and her really needed something fun, not to make up for it, but more of a reward, I felt. It was really more of a reward for getting through it again. And that's what, you know, that's what we wanted to do. So we went to Disney. And thankfully, I don't feel like we ever have to go back. I'd rather go to Universal. That's just me. We had a great time, but it was a lot. It was just too much. I'd rather go to Universal. But yeah, that, I think that's it, y'all. That's make sure, communicate with your spouse about your expectations. Com help them communicate with you about what they want. Talk to your kids, and the younger they are, the harder it's going to be. If you have li if you have little little kids, it's going to be tough because they're they don't understand. They just want they just want mom or dad back. Especially once they come back and they're here. What do you mean I just can't do everything I want? Why can't I climb all over them 24-7? So communication 
is going to be the key for all of this. Don't take it personal. Don't take anything they do personal. Just communicate. And again, minimum one week for every month. If towards the end of that time, they still seem kind of distant and like they're not all the way back home yet, talk to them. Suggest going to a counselor. Suggest going to a chaplain. Chaplains are a great... Look, I, I'm not pushing religion on anybody uh, by any means, but chaplains are a phenomenal resource because... Even if you're not, even if your spouse really doesn't want to talk to a chaplain because they think they're going to get religious on them, first thing they're not. They are there as a independent third party resource. But what they do have is a lot of knowledge about who else they need to connect with. Yes, they might get a little religion with you, but they're. If you say, "Look, I really need a resource." They have one. Go talk to the, if you're Air Force, go talk to the MFLAG, Military Family Life Counselor. Go to the Airman Family Readiness Center. All those, all those resources, Military One Source. Military One Source is probably the most underutilized resource in the military when it comes to anything mental health related. Really anything, because it's legit a one source, one stop shop for everything. Reach out to uh, reach out to a veteran service organization. Just get connected to people. But that's that's my biggest takeaway: is communicate, give them time, and again, towards the end of that reintegration period, again, that for that one week for every month they've been gone. That's that's not an official stat. That's something that I just I I've, I've looked into a little bit, and I feel like that's been good for us. Again, heavier deployments may need a little longer. But have them reach out to somebody. Be there for them. Communicate. And that's it. Hope you all have a great week. Uh, next week's episode is going to be about house hunting and the PCS process there because we just finished doing that for our next, pro our next house. So stay tuned. You'll have a great week. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. I'm always here for you all. And cheers.